everybody. This is mostly for Howard, Lee, and Alison. Howard, you had to leave leave early today, so you missed a really interesting discussion about where we might house this program we're thinking about for next year. I'm hesitant to use the word course. I've always struggled with the idea of course when it comes to leading people through a program of instruction about social media because there are so many loose ends. It doesn't fit neatly into kind of the category or the box that course implies. I'm just going to use the word program here. So what we looked at, Howard, was the the various ways that we could deliver what we're thinking about and Lee showed us a couple of examples and I'm going to try and screen share those here now. So this was a course that Lee uh, I think was a co-teacher on and it, it's um, about teaching health professionals and it uses Blogger. Now I like the way this is laid out, it's very neat, it's very clean so it's basically a, a blog uh, where posts are added chronologically and there's a comments feature at the end of each one. I guess it doesn't really allow itself easily for discussion. I note that um, no, it's not showing up here on the screen share, but the there is in this area here. There was a there's a block of people who are uh, in the course, and that's actually coming in from Facebook. But I prefer the community, the Google communities. So this is a screenshot of the Talo community and what I particularly like about it is that it has a navigation bar down there on the left which you can customize so you can actually have links to discussion, to events, to resources and in this case there's one about theory, email discussion group if you choose to have that. So the way that the information is presented is kind of structured. So on the, the home view here you've got if you go to all posts you see all posts but if you go to just the resources page and I think here there's actually nothing there but there would be a link to the resources that had been posted by the community. And I like the way that that navigation actually allows you to structure the information in such a way that it's relatively easy to find. It does actually have down here a kind of mugshot for all of the people who are in the community. At the moment, if you well, if you click on any of these, so there's Alex Hayes. If you click that, it takes you off to his profile. So how well people have populated their profile determines, of course, how well you might kind of not only get to know each other but know, know about each other. I really like the fact that there's a place where you can actually go and there's a kind of intro information about who people are, where they work or where they study. Just yeah, a quick sketch of who they are and I, I really like that. I don't know whether they need to have a, a Google account to do that. So I'm leaning towards using this Google community space as the home base for whatever it is we might offer. So Lee, I don't think we should use Moodle. I just don't think it fits the, the nature of the program. Um, social media is in essence about being open, Moodle is not open. There you can of course make it public and available to everybody. It's just kind of that's a workaround whereas something like Google Groups is much more kind of consistent with the spirit of social media and that sense of openness. I don't think we should mandate discussions. I think that discussions will occur but I don't think it should be the kind of thing that's a requirement as part of the structure of the course. 
I envisage actually that everybody might have a blog and discussions might take place not only here in this kind of community space, but they might also take place wherever people have a blog or on Twitter or on LinkedIn or wherever and whatever tools we choose to focus on. So I think the discussion, again, because of the very nature of this kind of course, it's going to be it's going to be scattered, and it's about managing chaos. And I think that's a difficult thing to teach, and it's a difficult thing for people to learn. But I think that's that's the nature of this game. Feel free to disagree with me, but that's how I feel at the moment. Um, I'm going to come back to me. That is stop screen sharing. Let's see if I can do this. Don't know if I can. I don't really care. I don't. Do I get the option of stopping screen share? I do. There we go. We also had some discussion about the idea of providing people with a book. And I think Lee was talking about a book that would basically contain information about the program. It might have key dates, it might have resources and readings that we'd suggest, it might have something to do that contains information about the structure, so, so, so like a handbook. Now Alison sent an email earlier today about whether or not we want to provide people with uh, this book, The Culture, The New Culture of Learning from Douglas Thomas and John C. Lee Brown. Well that's that might be good, it's ten bucks a pop, so I think that's a a very generous thing to do, so that's another option. But I was thinking more of yeah, providing a handbook for people. And I noticed, Lee, I think it was in the, the teacher education course, the health professionals course, that you were actually providing a book at the end of the course on of some of the more um, interesting assignments or blog posts that people had done. That's a nice idea too. So look, there's just a few random thoughts as a result of the conversation earlier today, which I really enjoyed and it kind of sparked me up and got me into thinking about, all right, let me take another look at Google+, Plus, how it works, Hangouts, the community space, how it links with Google Groups, etc. So enough from me. Be interested to hear your feedback. Cheers.